All right, number seven. Number seven is Sioni. What did you say? Two fifths. I knew it. Very good. Oh, Mr. Chow, I want to do eight. Eight. Yes, what is eight? Three fourths. Three fourths. Very good. Number niner. One fifth. Yeah, one fifth. Good. And ten. Ten. One. Yes. Six. Yes. Or six over one. Very good. Eleven. Looks like it's three plus two. Yes. Can I see? Two over five. Negative, right? Yeah. Good. And 12 is going to be negative as well. 12 is what? Uh, Christian? That's two for. Excellent work. Yes. Uh, so this is good. You do not have to know. For today's lesson, you do have to know how to work with fractions this way, which is why we did these. You will. You definitely will. No. It's always easy. All right, the term slope is just another way to say rate of change. Another way we know it is rise over run, okay? And we did that whole spiel about it uh, being that entire poster. M, it's slope. Rate of change, change in Y over change in X. Vertical change divided by horizontal change, rise over run, or this equation, which we'll get to, okay? Uh, you know, you could write this stuff in, all right? All right, here's an example. A long ride at an amusement park rises eight feet uh, rises eight feet, so it rises eight foot, okay? And then it changes horizontally by two foot, okay? How can you determine the slope? Well, slope is horizontal change, which in this case is eight feet. And then we divide it by the horizontal change, which is two feet which means it is 4, or if you really wanted to, you may write it as 4 over 1. Either one of these work, okay? They mean the same thing. So maybe this is the roller coaster ride. That's a good question, Christian, so we would cancel the feats out. Okay, so slope is just a number. Yeah, this told us the first one, it, it rises 8 feet, so we know that's rise. And then the, it says it's horizontal change. Where, well, we know that's the denominator anyways, so that must be horizontal. Because horizontal like is side to side, okay? Now, to, to go along with Christian's question, though, in this case, feet did cancel each other out, but later on it will not sometimes, because it will still be a rate, all right? Uh, other questions on this one? Yeah, right, the ratios rise to run for 8 feet. Just simplify to 4. Sure, we did that. All right, uh, this here, do we need to go over slope again, or does everyone feel pretty good about the poster? Because yeah, the poster is up there. It has this garbage, all right? Notice on this next problem, we have rise of 10 inches and a run of 48 inches, so it's just, the rise is 10 over the run, 48. Okay, so yeah, it simplifies to five over 24. Here's another great example, and it's going to show you this, uh, see so you got the vertical change, which is two, and the horizontal change, which is one, so it would be two over one, bam, all right? Uh, are you guys serious? You don't have any questions about this stuff because it's very important for you guys in your math career. Okay. We're going to do this one the same way we did the other ones with the tables, okay? So look at this. We got change in y, which is on the right, 
This went down 3. So my change in y is down 3 over the change in x, which is up 2. So up 2, okay? Let's look at the next set. So from 9 to 6, went down 3 again. This went up 2. Bam. Same idea here. Down 3, up 2. This is my answer. All right? Next one, B and C. All right. Uh, so on B, uh, I wouldn't go up and down first like they have here kind of shown. In B, of course, this is going to be a fraction. Okay. Let's look at our, well, sure, whatever. Let's go ahead and look at that vertical change right here. Well, it went up from this point to this line. So these two lines, right? So we went up one, two, three. So it went up three. So I saw my vertical change is up three. Okay. Uh, now I look at my horizontal change, which is from this line to this one to the right. So it's positive. And I went one, two, three, four. I went to the right four. So four. Here's my answer. Is one fourth. Let's find out how. Well, how? How would it be one fourth? Tomas. It's going. It's going upwards by two. Okay. Therefore, it's going. All right. Well, let's check, eh? Yes, Olivia. Very good. So this and is up from four. Two to six is up four. That's what I said. No, from two to six, yeah. And then the bottom ones are up one. So this one is up one? Yeah. And same here. Very good. Uh, you would want to check this middle one, though, Olivia, just to make sure it's consistent. That way it's a constant rate of change, okay? You're still good because it didn't really ask us to check for linearity. Now... Yes. Linearity. If it tells you to check for slope, it's already linear. If it checks you for, if it tells you to check for linearity, then you may have to find out if it's linear. And there may not be slope because if it's not linear, there's no slope. Okay. Evan, notice it's very good. This is the change in four and the change in one, but these are the changes in x. That's why the 4 here is on the bottom. All right? The change in Y is these 1s, which is on the top. Yeah, there's the answers right here. All right? So let's say that we have a point here at negative 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So it would be right about here. Okay? So we've got negative 3, negative 4. How many of you do not know the coordinate system? Okay, good. Then I will proceed. All right, let's say that we have another point at 2. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would put us right about in here. Okay? So 2 and 5. All right. So let's say this is a line, of course. There's a nice, pretty line. Here's the thing is, there's kind of a quick and easy way to solve these, okay? And all we're going to do is, notice it's the change in y, so change in y divided by change in x. So all I've got to do is focus first on my y values. And so if I go from here to here, okay, notice uh, what I can do is I can just take the second y and subtract it from this one. Right? So I have 5 minus negative 4. And I will divide this by change in x. I'm sorry, change in y. This is, yeah, this was this way, right? So now I'm doing this way. Sorry, horizontal change. Okay, then I do my horizontal change, and I do the same thing. This second point from this point to this one, I'm going to subtract 2 minus 
negative 3, okay? This will give us a whopping 9 over 5 is my slope, all right? The only reason I point this out is that that is what this equation is. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, all right? You won't always see this on a graph, okay? What this means is they'll say, find the slope, find the slope between two points, like mm, two and negative four, and negative one and eight. See, you don't have a graph here, but you do have an equation. So all you've got to do is say, well, let's just, let this point be point one. So I'd say this is x1, that's y1. Is anyone confused yet? Nope. <laughs> yes. Kind of? Okay. <laughs> Let's say that this is point two. So I say this is my x2 value and that's my y2 value. I'm just finding the slope between two points. Put your hands down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I have this equation, right? And minuses. So all I've got to do is replace these with these values. So I start with x1. Where does x1 go in this equation? Wait, how do you know it's first? It doesn't matter. Okay. I could have said that this one here is point number one if I wanted to, Christian. It's arbitrary. It doesn't even matter. Okay. But I'm saying that this is x1. This is my x value for point one. Where does x1 go, Christian? It goes on bottom. Bottom. Bottom right. So I'm going to put this 2 in the bottom right. Because x1 is in the bottom right. See this equation, this one? Okay. Now the next point I'm going to go to is y1. Where does y1 go? Top right. So that's negative 4. Okay. Now let's look at point 2. I've got my x value. x2 goes... Bottom left. Bottom left, negative 1. Where does my y2 value go? Top left. Top left, 8. Then I just solve this, and this looks a lot like the bell work. Oh, yeah, then I just solve. All right, here's another example. They're using this equation, which is on the poster. It's up there. See that y, except they used y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That doesn't even matter. It is. You'll get the same answer no matter what. Okay. Any time, solve these. You got D and E. Find the slope between these two points. All right, let's, let's look at this one, okay? Uh, because Tomas has a good point here. You can graph these if it's easier for you, okay? Notice our vertical change, because we always go to the right, is 1, right? Uh, also, it didn't ask us to graph these. It wanted us to find the slope, okay? So notice I went up 1. And then I, I'm going to go to the right, one, two, three. So I went to the right, three. So my slope would actually be one third. I thank you for graphing that, though, Tomas. Uh, the iPad. Because <laughs> you walked up there. Shoot out, shoot out. All right, so Seth is going to do this using the equation now. Is that correct? Uh, looks good. All right, very good. So, yeah, this is, uh, well, yeah, looks like it is three and two. Oh, actually, okay. Now, notice, uh, let, let's look at this here real quick, okay? And it, it's good. It's better that we do this now than on the homework or during a test, okay? All right, look at this. Uh, remember, it's... Uh, X 
2 minus x1 under y2 minus y1, all right? So if we call this our, our uh, well, yeah, there you go. If we call this our point number one, and this is point two, and I've got x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2, okay? So all I'm going to do is replace these values in this equation with these ones, okay? So what I'm looking at is uh, x1 is negative 7, okay? And uh, x2, which is negative 3, right? So x2 is right here. So it's just a positional thing as far as it looks like, and this would turn into a big plus. It is messy, sorry. Uh, y1 is negative 4, and y2 is negative 2. Okay? And this is this turns into a plus, so it looks like we get two over four, which is one half. Seth, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second, guys. Let's look at another example. So give me some numbers here. Three, 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 four, three, seven, three, seven, fourteen, twenty-three, twenty-seven, four. Twenty-seven. Actually, that's good. Let's do four, three, four, five, six. Okay, but let's make the four negative. Okay. This is another way you can look at this this type of problem. All right. Should I go erase the board? No. But. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the y's using this top bar or rainbow or whatever you want to call it. And I'll do the same thing with the x's just on the bottom. Okay? Now I use I always go from left to right, so that's what I'm going to do here. So from negative 4 to 6, how far would I have to go? 10, ten right? So I'd say I went up 10. The change in x I would have went from 3 to 5, which gave me up 2, two. two right? Yeah. This gives me the fraction, and all I've got to do essentially is put a bar in between the 10 and the 2. Oh, that's so easy. See how that works, 10 over 2? Now simplify, it's just 5 over 1. Five or one. Uh, this is another technique you can use to find slope. Okay? That's easier. That's so much easier. If they give you two points. Okay? All right, so you can see up here, and they've, they've done this. As well, it's this is where the answers are there, top right. Okay. All right. Answers to these in case. Can we? Can we? Can we? Otherwise, just start the homework.